सो टुडे लेट अस स्टार्ट आवर डिस्कशन ऑन फंडामेंटल ऑफ प्रोटेटिंग मशीन द लास्ट मॉड्यूल ऑफ आवर सिलेबस एंड प्रोबेबली द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट मॉड्यूल अदर देन द ट्रांसफार्मर व्हाटएवर मॉड्यूल वी हैव ऑब्वियसली इन योर नेक्स्ट सेमेस्टर यू विल गेट अ रिकैप ऑन दिस होल टॉपिक अ क्विक रिकैप बट इट इज ऑलवेज प्रेफरेबल दैट यू ग्रास्प ऑल द कांसेप्ट हियर एट दिस करंट सेमेस्टर so in the next semester you will find it very easy to proceed here in this lecture instead of discussing any particular type of machine what i will discuss i will discuss some common features among the rotating machine so that is here the name fundamental of rotating machine will analyze some common features of ac and dc and then we'll see how things are more or less similar for uh, most of the rotating machine and how they are apparently uh, different although they are apparently different from the outside configuration but inside the machine housing it is almost same and for all the machine you will have armature reaction that demagnetizing cross magnetizing everything is present there in a machine so uh, that uh, here in this chapter I, it will be my objective to give you that kind of uh, like a generalized uh, approach to you so that you can proceed right so today uh, to start with fundamental of rotating machines by me so here you can see that what are the so first elementary concept like electromechanical energy conversion occurs when changes in the flux linkage lambda we all know that but here what i am trying to mention that it is uh, this d lambda dt occurs due to dynamically varying emf it is not the statistically induced emf you can have a constant uh, magnetic pole that is producing so here i have written rotating the winding in magnetic field rotating magnetic field through winding so this is a kind of things that is stationary field uh rotating armature and this one is rotating armature stationary field and stationary winding and time changing magnetic field which we saw in case of transformer here you should note that in case of a few machine like ac commutator motor we have both of them like we have both dynamically induced emf as well as uh, induced emf due to transformer action so uh, we should not get confused and we should not or rather we should give up the notion that transformer action only exist in transformer no transformer action can exist anywhere whenever a conductor is uh, experiencing a flux variation due to the nature of the flux if the flux is itself is a time vary then it produces this kind of action now Now, uh, here uh, you can see that these uh, two types of armature winding I am talking about that AC current carrying on winding. So, what are the AC current carrying winding in different machine in synchronous and induction motor armature winding that is generally housed at the stator slots. Uh, so, this is uh, stationary in nature, and in case of DC machine, it is armature winding is uh on the rotor so if you ask me why so one common if you apply your little bit of common sense you can figure it out like in case of uh dc machine you have to take means uh you need to uh take two output terminals to collect the voltage if you consider the generator configuration however in case of synchronous generator at least you need three terminals or rather in some cases six terminals so if you go on uh, connecting so many number of brushes uh, through slip ring or to any other mechanism then it will uh, increase the chance of sparking wear and tear and other losses at your brush end so another thing is variable reluctance machine and stepper motor where we do not have any winding on the rotor 
uh, they just produce the torque due to their non uniform wear gap i have discussed a few example of such kind of uh, like vrm is your reluctance motor i have discussed that when your rotor is having saliency while solving the problem uh, in my last video i have discussed already about them that how this saliency itself can produce a torque uh, that will try to constantly uh, align your rotor to a particular direction and that is how it produces a torque that is varying with twice of your angular frequency uh, okay now here we can have different type of winding design i will discuss all of them don't worry i will also present some demonstration like here the winding used in rotating electrical machine we can classify them like concentrated winding all the winding turns are put together in series to form one multi turn coil all the turns have same magnetic axis so here examples a few examples are given like field winding for salient pole synchronous machine uh, dc machine and primary and secondary winding of transformer so what happened in salient pole machine what is salient pole and cylindrical rotor machine i will discuss uh, salient pole uh, from our last problem solving video on electromechanical energy conversion you can find that in case of some means some uh, structure that structure rotor is not cylindrical in shape so the reluctance faced by the uh, flux produced by your stator winding it's facing different reluctance so whenever the orientation of rotor changes from one position to another position and that is the essence of having a salient pole machine it provides uh, some added advantage as well as disadvantage also i have raised one question like how the length of a machine uh, can alter and uh, most of you have given a wrong answer uh, so i would like to discuss all those things here now in distributed winding all the winding turns are arranged in several full pitch or fractional pitch coils these coils are then housed in slots spread through around the air gap periphery to form phase or commutator winding so here it is important to note that if it is an ac machine then you will get phase and if it is a dc machine you will get the commutator winding examples of distributed windings are stator and rotor of induction motor the armature of both synchronous and dc machine fine now obviously armature of the synchronous machine so stator construction stator winding for three phase alternator and induction motor are identical in construction laminated low silicon steel rings joined together slot insulated with miller and examples of such here you can see that it is 36 slots with three coil conductors per slot like there is no bound that you have to place only one conductor at one slot your conductor slot can hold multiple conductor uh, and that is also advantageous it provides more mechanical strength of your winding and 12 slots per phase it is very easy to find out 36 by 3 will give you 12 now here uh, another thing is that that armature winding in general are classified under two main heads namely closed winding that closed winding what is closed winding that they are in a closed path in the sense that if one starts from any point of the winding traverse it once again reaches the starting point from where one had started this is used only in dc and ac commutator machine what is open winding open winding is most common and it is used in uh, suitable uh, AC machine means all of all the AC machines are having open winding right so that is all about the preliminary let us move to a more uh, another few terms are there 
let us introduce those or ourselves with those terms the conductor a length of wire which takes active part in the energy conversion process is called a conductor like even if you have a conductor of say a coil side with length 10 meter but 8 meter is uh, covered by the pole aperture then you can say only 8 meter is your conductor length it is not the 10 meter the remaining 2 meter is known as the dummy end of the coil right turn one turn consists of two conductors you know that coil one coil may be multi turn or may be single turn coil side one coil with any number of turns has only two coil side right if it is a multi turn coil then there will be uh, means the individual side will con contain multiple conductors if it is a single turn coil one side will contain only one conductor and then one coil will have be just like one turn okay now these are the simple uh, representation this is coil side this two turn coil you can see this is coil side this is multi turn coil and this portion is overhang or dummy portion that doesn't take place in your active like this uh, in this hexagon this is the this vertical lines or vertical side of the coil they take place in your energy conversion but not the overhang region or the dummy region of that coil so as we see that this is a single layer winding one coil side occupies the total slot area used only in small AC machine and double layer winding or it may be triple layer or multi layer well that slot contains even number of coil sides in two layer double layer winding is more common above 5 kilowatt machine this data construction here is some diagram I would like to show you more on them uh, like here okay uh, so I'll get back to you once again here that how these things are very so this is our uh, machine structure you can see that if we take a cut model of our laboratory then it will look like this right now here you can see that this part this is the outer structure of the machine this is the uh, means stator winding this is a rotor this is an example of cylindrical rotor machine the rotor is pure cylinder in shape remember the stator is always a hollow cylinder we do not generally means use a projected uh, shape or any projected structure in stator uh, however sometimes rotor are cylinder in shape sometimes rotor are uh, like so he, here it is a cylindrical rotor you can see the shaft length i was um, asking you one question that how this this is the actual length that is going to take part in your you know, like give a generation whatever conductors is used here is not means whatever is the overhang amount of conductor is not very important and let us see that if we take out this structure then how it looks like this is as big as this even if you do not have the idea uh, so let me show you something uh, more interesting like here you can see that a man is uh, it was quite an uh, old configuration it is a uh, some uh, big old machine so here you can see that that uh, the man is uh, like doing some manufacturing job on the stator so you can see that how big is this structure right now uh, this is one uh, like here you can understand that uh, how we develop the rotor structure sorry stator structure stators are like we take hollow cylindrical not hollow cylindrical rather a circular disc all these are laminated disc 
right now you are seeing that here uh, these persons are stacking up the disc to form a cylindrical structure these are the circular disc of very thin length if you use uh, thick structure then obviously that will increase the eddy current loss in the machine and <coughs> obviously you can see that what is the direction of lamination obviously it is perpendicular to the machine axial length why because you are going to place the conductor parallel to machine axis so if you place the conductor parallel to machine axis they are bound to produce flux that is perpendicular to the conductor axis and therefore it is necessary that you should laminate your machine parallel to your flux path right it should not be something like uh, you should uh, laminate it parallel to your flux path and that is why uh, we use this kind of disc uh, shape structure to stacking up and here although these are kind of hazy images uh, let me see whether i can do some uh, thing on them or not so here uh, just a minute Uh, so oh, this is somewhat clear but if I extend them then they are making me hazy uh, you can you can see it here that these slots these thin slots these are actually these slots these slots are for stator conductor you can place multiple conductor or you can place uh, one conductor but generally we place multi-layer winding so many conductors are placed so you can see the number of slots present in a stator uh, structure here you can see that this is also very easy just let me check whether i can do something for you or not just a minute this is a cross-sectional view of your stator here you can see that this is your uh, rotor axis like this is uh, where it is your this rotor shaft is placed here right what is rotor shaft i am trying to mention this is the rotor shaft and this is placed here now this one like all these images are uh, not getting good quality images if i so now i think this picture is somewhat more uh, clear and legible here you can see that this is uh, the stator structure like the outer surface is our stator structure these are the conductor slot so you can count how many slots are present uh, now here this region whatever we are having here this region is our this which i am filling it with this uh, gray color or this is the air gap of our machine 
So here you can see that this is a machine with uniform air gap and there are four number of poles. Right. So I hope it gives you a very basic idea of the construction of our synchronous machine. So now if you take out this data structure, what you will get? You will get uh, something like that, this one. This type of shape you will get. Okay. Now let us try to understand how EMF are uh, generated in a single turn or even if it is an n turn, uh, n turn concentrated coil, how EMF is getting generated and then gradually we will move towards the case of distributed winding. Obviously you can see here the number of slots present, it is very large number of slots are present and you can figure out that for 4 pole machine total angle is 4 by 2 into 360 degree that is 720 degree. So here number of slots is, uh, I, I have not counted the slots but I think it is very large here about 36 or 40. So you can figure out that they are very large uh, number of uh, means slots and inter slots angle are very very small. Like when I am um, showing a structure that is 4 pole with just 12 slots. And if you change the 12 slots to 36 slots, obviously the inter slot angle will reduce. And more the number of slots, the inter slots angle will be small for same uh, pole configuration. Now see, uh, instead of making confused, let us uh, discuss something very simple and very straightforward things. Like let us consider and uh, perhaps you will get the answer of uh, the question that I asked you during your class. That now uh, this is a concentrated coil, so all the end coils are placed here, n turn coils. Here this side total number of conductors, how many conductors we are having here, it is that two end conductors. Now this is placed uh, inside a fixed means permanent magnet structure. Now uh, we have done this, uh, there is two way to do it. like. Here it can be done it in this way also. We can have this structure. Sorry. This is the two sides of the winding. And you have uh, means This is not mushroom, this is actually a rotating pole. It is rotating in this way, in between them. And obviously, if this is N and this side is S, as you turn, these two uh, fixed conductors will experience some flux variation. They are the stator conductors. They will experience flux variation. Right? Now, see what I am trying to say that for n turns, let us for simplicity let us considering these n turns are rotating as you have already studied this machine you will find it more relatable and more easy. So what we can write the maximum flux density Bm is so why it is Bm? DL is the area of the effective area of this length where L is the effective length of the uh, your uh, conductor and B is the dia of that coil. So DL is the amount of area. Now at that instant when our coil, I have taken this snap from the book of S. Lang's dog. Here you can see that when the coil occupies position indicated by theta, what we can write that uh, the coil coil flux that is uh, for that time flux psi 
will be small phi will be phi cos theta right now if that is the case then just a minute then what we will get that the corresponding instantaneous emf will be how much all the time as i told you it is e is equal to minus n d psi dt so you will get it is like minus sorry plus n phi sin theta d theta dt right but what is your d theta dt this d theta dt is your isn't so this is the angular velocity so if d theta dt is angular velocity then if we know the angular velocity omega and if we can express it in terms of uh, that omega in terms of rotation per second like uh, this omega is equal to 2 pi ns then uh, this theta can be replaced suitably and we will get a new equation for our emf that is 2 pi ns in like this d theta dt i am writing this omega is equal to 2 pi ns and e is equal to e is equal to n phi sin theta 2 pi ns or rearranging we can write 2 pi ns n phi sin theta or this theta further can be represented as as theta is a function of t so we can write t it is one instance so you can write this should also be sine theta t so total expression will be something like 2 pi ns n phi sin theta t or this theta t can be further replaced by sin omega t unlike theta omega is not a variable omega is constant so 2 pi ns n phi sin omega t now uh, if you want to find out the maximum value em so maximum value will be how much 2 pi ns n phi because maximum value of this is uh, 1 and what would be the rms value generally we denote rms value or phasor as i told you in my earlier videos by simple e capital letter that is root 2 pi n s n phi right Uh, now this formula derived from this each peripheral conductor at the instance of time t now the we can we can reach to this conclusion in a different way also like here if you see that b is actually perpendicular to your uh, means b is uh, something that is perpendicular to that or b is in coil plane right and 
perpendicular to this linear vector v what is v v is linear displacement that can be replaced represented by theta into r where r is your coil radius so this v you can write it here like e is equal to Two n b l v, right? Now this b is what b is two n b m sine theta l v, right? Now further this we can write it like. How to write V? Any guess? Like, can we write V? V is what? Try to understand. V is the linear velocity. So, what is the relation with linear velocity and your angular velocity? So, linear velocity should be. So in that case, what you will have, you will have this e is equal to n s Now here let us replace this b m by our this phi d by l. So what we will see that will cancel out each other and leaving us with so from this again we are getting this expression of e that is uh, 2 pi same expression n s sin omega t capital n should be there now the question that i asked you can clearly see that e has nothing to do with l although that l is there but if you keep b constant then l has nothing to do And E is only dependent on E is equal to BLV if you try to proceed with that formula. So, um, one thing you may uh, raise a question that said there is some uh, like some expression of phi is there. Sorry, I have missed this phi here. I should write it. So, if we increase that phi, then what would happen? So, phi obviously if you want more flux then uh, that make sense that if you increase the area then for same flux density you can have more flux but at the same time think about it a little bit more that this excess flux can be uh, means realized by increasing the dia or diametral length or the axial length so which one you should try to increase like whether you will uh, increase d or you will increase l because whether you will increase d or l the area of rectangle will be uh, changed and will increase if you increase any one of them so if your intention is to uh, means and find more flux inside your machine housing then any one can be changed so which one we should change you have to think about it 
now here it is a special uh, like i have taken the surface development this picture i have also taken from langstrom and one important thing that i want to show you here that like from our previous equations what we can conclude that your e um, like here the expression is root 2 pi n s phi right uh, so and if we started with this so from this what we can say that emf induced is only dependent on the relative motion between the coils and the field like whether you consider a stationary field or a revolving field it remains constant however keep it in mind that here we are using a steady magnetic field it is not that time varying or pulsating magnetic field had we considered time varying magnetic field we need to consider their uh, means uh, impact on, on the expression of our system alone and we have to consider the expression due to this dynamic EMF and then we have to find out the resultant EMF. We will show you to it, uh, show it to you uh, later but for the time being let us proceed to the next section where I have taken the special development. So what is the essence of showing you this picture that uh, the developed in the coil remains here you can see that your E E was sinusoidal variation and now we are trying to plot here the flux variation. So what type of flux variation you are getting? Your uh, flux variation like two things one uh, we would like to uh, discuss here that first of all if we go back to our previous uh, case then you will see that this component that is your pi cos theta right phi cos theta phi cos theta is the component that is responsible for your production of flux or means this is the, that is the only useful amount of flux if you have doubt which is your phi cos theta i can uh, again show you that let me draw it here like this is our phi and this angle is theta so if you draw anything perpendicular to your coil plane uh, from vertical position your coil is at an angle theta now if you draw a perpendicular on your coil then this total will be how much 90 plus theta right uh, or this angle individually will be how much it is theta so this component will be phi cos theta so note please note one thing that the component that is perpendicular to your coil is useful not the one that is I uh, mean changing in your coil plane so from here one more important conclusion we can draw that is several important conclusion we can draw 
the most important one is that this phi sin theta that lies in the plane of the coil it has only inductive effect and it does not link any coil why so obvious because this flux phi sin theta is phi is steady there is no variation in phi and phi sin theta are always in the coil plane so coil is not getting any change due to this phi sin theta whatever be the value of sin theta phi sin theta always uh, a coplanar or rather uh, means that component of flux passing through the same plane of your coil and therefore they do not link any flux. So who linked the flux that is phi cos theta. So here if you compare the alternator with your transformer this is a case we are considering it's a EMF generation so it is an alternator. So alternator can be tagged as Why it is a generalized transformer? Uh, because you can consider that it is a transformer with motion between primary and secondary and that causes uh, uh, means introduction of uh, like induced EMF in that coil. However, you need prime over here. That is not the case in case of a normal uh, transformer. So now let us try to understand what is the relationship between the polar flux and air gap flux density. So for that this is the uh, means, uh, polar flux and air gap flux density that is very important to us what we can write. Just a minute. So here you can see that what would happen to our means if we plot it then this will be the 3d shape of our uh, flux waveform we will be getting this kind of shape uh, we will have this form of shape right and this is quite obvious however one thing we should not forget that whatever be the shape of our flux curve uh, you can see that both this one flux density variation curve bm sin theta and our induced EMF is E uh, sine means uh, EM sine theta you can say in that way. So we can uh, write it in a very clear manner that the induced EMF exactly follows the induced EMF, let me write it more clearly, time variation exactly follows the space variation of the flux density waveform. The induced EMF time variation exactly follows the space variation of the flux density waveform. 
So obviously, it is very easy to understand that uh, if we consider the flux variation, what we will get, it would be like something. Let me draw it. If you place it inside to um, like this. So here it is N and S. Obviously, you can expect at a very beginning instead of getting a pure sinusoidal waveform like this. You can expect what? That flux will be present only under this pole shoe region, right? So if this is our 180 degree this portion this angular span as well as this angular span will be there will be no flux present so what is that angular span let it be 30 degree and this to be 30 degree then if you go for surface development here it is say pi then you can expect a trapezoidal waveform like this uh, starting at pi by 3 to pi by 3 and similarly another one for your this kind of waveform you can expect now whatever be the case one thing is very clear uh, that um, uh, sorry I, I i think i i have made some mistake it is not 2 pi by 3 it is how much it is 5 pi by 6 and similarly this one is 11 pi by 6 so this total span is 2 pi by 3 this one is also 2 pi by 3 now see what is the case that we do not get this kind of brick wall uh, you can say this waveform is brick wall waveform which is a uh, very desirable characteristics for any filter that it will give you a full gain at its pass band and then it will give you zero gain at its attenuation band but this is not the case what we can say that whatever be the amount of flux produced by this side means it is not like that flux is only present here and there is no flux rather uh, it also tries to occupy this means uh, form a path here so instead of getting this kind of brick wall uh, waveform or means this kind of pulse waveform with sharp int what we will get we will get this uh, this kind of let it be the actual waveform will be kind of a flat top sine wave now obviously one question may come in your mind that in your transformer you have studied that for a flat top wave we can get a voltage harmonics and there is no way uh, voltage harmonics is uh, reciprocating the flux harmonics and they are having some difference but here 
it is the space angle and this is our in this way we are uh, plotting flux density so flux density variation with space angle uh, is exactly reciprocated by the by your E that is equal to B L V. So I have already given you the hints why this is a time phase angle. Why unlike transformer here E is uh, directly proportional means that can directly uh, follow B uh, or follow the pointwise variation of B you can understand by this uh, expression you can understand but i would like to hear from you what is your take on this particular topic so now what we have observed that it is uh, this diagram is drawn for uh, it all started with a single uh, n turn coil so what we have observed let me write it very clearly for your reference single n turn coil also concentrated then we have started we have started that how uh, the or let me write it like the time variation of the induced EMF across winding conductors mimic the space variation of flux density waveform now the one thing that is very clear in this flux density waveform is that all these flux density waveform for machine you will see that they are symmetrical in successive half loop even if they are non sinusoidal even if they are non sinusoidal they are periodic generally symmetric over successive half mm, wave like in addition you can see that there is no such like abrupt discontinuity is there uh, one more thing they are obviously single valued of space angle for flux density waveform and uh, time phase angle for your EMF waveform so 
all these are there another thing that is these are the three and fourth point that is very important that it is there is no such abrupt jump is present or means there is no infinite discontinuity exist hence all these waveforms can be expressed by Mm. combination of harmonics using the concept of Fourier analysis. So we can carry out that Fourier analysis and we can figure out what are the harmonics present in our uh, space angle waveform and we can expect that same type of harmonics will be present there in our EMF waveform. But uh, before I proceed further, let us take a few examples and let us try to understand what is this uh, means conductor um, or when slots winding single layer double layer how to place them like basic placement of winding then we will discuss several other winding factors later but for the time being let us consider a case of uh, 12 slot 4 pole 3 phase winding Now, here are a few things you should remember that for 4 pole, total electrical angle of traversal from one end means if you make a complete uh, traversal through the periphery of the machine, then it will be angular electrical amount of traversal will be 4 by 2. Basically, this is P by 2, so P is equal to 4, so 4 by 2 is equal to 360 degree. 720 degree so slot angle it is better to represent slot angle in terms of electrical that will reduce your amount of confusion and also you don't have to recall what is the number of pole and how mechanical angle and electrical angles are collected so this is 60 degree electrical obviously mechanical angle will be half of this that is 30 degree now there is another thing like 12 slot 4 pole 3 phase winding so slot uh, per pole is 12 by 4 is equal to 3 that means 3 uh, 3 slots will uh, consist of or will uh, work together three slot conductors will work together to form a single pole and another factor that is uh, interesting that is uh, that is slot par phase par pole is equal to 12 by 12 is equal to 1. So only one conductor will be there under one phase, I will be connected with one phase and will fall under a single pole. So how these things are happening, let us uh, see the demonstration video, then we will be able to figure it out. In normal waveform, how we represent it, it will be like in your book uh, diagram it will be like something
now with this you are having 12 slots so how the slots are this is like one slot you are having here it is one group then uh, another one that is approximately 30 degree effort then another one that is 60 60 degree effort then here you are having another one so you will have slot numbering like 1 2 3 4 then fifth slot here six slot somewhere here here it will be seventh slot then here it is eighth slot here it will be uh, ninth slot here ninth slot here it will be tenth slot here it will be eleventh slot here it will be twelfth slot so now if you means uh, calculate the uh, these two adjacent slot substand an angle mechanical angle 30 degree and as it is four pole machine it will give you 60 degree right and also we have to determine uh, that how to place the conductors in them these uh, slots so we'll see it and uh, let us see that video where we will be getting this one more thing i would like to see uh, share with you that do remember that the phase difference like how is your pole structure like you have four pole machine like what is the number of slot per pole per phase it is oh i have deleted it like uh, as far i remember it is uh, it was three right so let us consider we are having a cylindrical rotor so this is like one north pole Another one here is I'm trying to draw a cylinder here. This side is south. Again, here it is. So what is happening here, this one is continuously rotating and accordingly we are getting EMF of different values in our, our conductors are here, like uh, they are placed here one conductor, one here another, here another, here another. So you can see that when it is N, uh, it is associated with direct turn interaction of N pole then the other one is under direct interaction of S pole and it should be like uh, if you subtract there then it will be 4 minus 1 that is 3 and what is your adjacent slot electrical angle that is 3 into 60 degree that is 180 and here I have considered that it is like uh, slot is for generator but that Whenever you place the stator winding, you have to consider that if you remove, uh, sorry, uh, if there is no 
means uh, like the rotor doesn't produce any magnetic field or if you are not operating in generating mode if you are operating in motoring mode then these windings should produce this identical type of field distribution right uh, now it may uh, it is for one instance after some time what will happen this n will come here and accordingly you can understand that how waveform of each phase will execute a sinusoidal wave like they will give us uh, expected this kind of variation but obviously we will not get uh, sinusoidal variation we will get some different variation what type of variation we will get we will know more or we will discuss more about that but for the time being let us see that video So let me try to demonstrate today with a simple cut model. I wish I could make a better model for you, but due to uh, means uh, there is not much time available to us. Um, we have to complete our lecture by 20th of this month. So whatever cut model was available to me, I just picked that one uh, which I uh, used in the last year to demonstrate. One thing uh, I would like to say in this context that you may raise a question that sir why don't you use the original cut model those are quite means uh, they are very uh, close to our original machine and why don't you show us obviously I can go to laboratory and I can show you those models I can make a video on them but those models are actually very close to our practical machine and therefore uh, they are uh, structure wise or everything they are so means complicated and so much uh, means so much engineered to that extent that you will not be able to get it now uh, let me start this with a very simple way so in uh, what we have understood so far of our discussion and what is our common sense that if we uh, look at the uh, from the outside the stator of the machine is like a right circular cylinder like this right if uh, suppose I have taken the rotor out of it and this is our right circular cylinder now here uh, this is our stator now how it has uh, been uh, meant or manufactured it is like uh, these are made up of laminated steel laminated steel plate as I have shown you like laminated steel plates are stacked up to form this stator this is the length of the machine axial length let this length be L and let uh, this is the diameter D and then what you will get here the full uh, lateral length will be pi D axial length L lateral length pi D now uh, one more thing here I have assumed for our sake of understanding or for our simplicity that here this machine is like uh, four pole uh, three phase 12 slot machine so what I, why I have considered 12 slot that I explained like now see uh, this is our machine structure now if we go for surface development like uh, we have to just open up this cylinder we have to cut this cylinder along its uh, axial length and we will get this kind of rectangular structure with one side pi d and another side l and the other side is here you can see that here we are having this a b c uh, three phase I have used, uh, I do not know whether you can see the color or not, here I have used this uh, A, this red one is for A slot, this one is for B slot, the blue one is for uh, B slot and the black one is for C slot. Now uh, first of all let us forget about this whatever I have drawn here, let us consider we are having 12 uh, conductors. These are actually actin conductors, I cut them in pieces and then I place it here. So you can see here total 12 number of conductors are there. Now the question is that how you can connect or rather interconnect these 12 conductors.
to form star or delta and you can uh, means either hit uh, it from a uh, three phase bus bar or you can extract power from this from three phase bus bar depending on whether you are operating this structure as a motor or generator i am not going to that my uh, idea of understanding is that it is simple now first of all we have to find out what is the slot angle so what is the slot angle if you want to understand that slot angle is like here it is uh, what is uh, the total angle electrical angle if you traverse from one end to another end along uh, your lateral direction it will be 4 by 2 into 360 that is 720 degree now this 720 degree you are having here now so what is the angular span of individual slot electrically its angular span is 720 by 12 that is 60 degree mechanically your angular span is 720 sorry 360 by 12 that is 30 degree so uh, we can say that these two are mechanically 30 degree apart these two are mechanically 30 degree apart and electrically 60 degree apart so one idea from our DC machine what we can uh, understand that if one end of a particular phase is under north pole the another end should be one pole pitch apart so electrically whenever you consider about pole pitch electrical angle between pole pitch is always 180 degree so i have to travel 180 degree so how can i travel 180 degree if i say this is uh, uh, say um, uh, this is one fs right this is one fs now uh, if you uh, travel 160 degree then you will get another conductor so the uh, angular span between these two is 60 then if you travel one more then you will get another one then if you go it in this way now you can see that it is another 60 now if you find it uh, means uh, difficult to understand then you can uh, consider it in this way also like here you can see that uh, here it is uh, this one will be somewhat more uh, convincing to you because uh, this kind of picture you get in your book also like if this is fs so what i was trying to say that you have to uh, miss uh, move forward 180 degree to find out another slot so first of all there was no slot say here only the groups are present but no conductor so first if i place a conductor over here then i have to calculate that what uh, should be the next place so this is one conductor and then i connect them with this as both of them are belong to fs so i have connected them with a red line here i am using this red line to indicate fs right now uh, first of all let us complete the fs condition now uh, how many number of fs conductors will be there so you have to understand that what is slot per pole per phase slot per pole per phase here how many slots we are having 12 how many poles we are having 4 how many phase we are having 3 so slot per pole per phase is 1 that means 1 uh, fs 1 fs red conductor will belong to north then another will belong to south however if we uh, go to like uh, number of conductor per phase then we will find it is 12 slot or number of slots per phase it will be 12 slot by 3 phase that is 4 that means uh, i have already discussed the placement of two conductors now we have to find out the position of another two conductors and obviously here we can expect that another two conductors will also be evenly spaced from like the first two so if this is my position of second conductor i have to move another 180 degree like this 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 so this is the position of third conductor and accordingly i can figure out the fourth conductor however these two are under one pole pair n s this uh, these two are under another pole pair one n s now unlike dc here the case is not that simple here we are having three phase so you have to determine 
Oh, okay, we have placed all A face. Fine. Now we have to determine what would be the position of B face. Now while calculating B face, we will we can use that formula that A and B or we can use that notion that A and B are 120 degree apart. So electrically, what is the uh, interplot angle that is 60 degree. So I have to move two slot to realize that 120 degree. So from this, if we consider this is the starting position of A, I traverse 1, 2, I get this one. This is the 120 degree, right? So this is the first B. Now what should be the another B should be placed? Likewise for A, we should have uh, four conductors for total for B phase. So uh, the another B should be 180 degree apart from the first B phase conductor. So I calculate this is uh, here from this here it's 60 degree here it's 120 degree here it is 180 degree. So if I place B here then it will be here. So if I uh, if you are interested about slot number generally we uh, denote this is using slot number. So this is first slot for F S. Then obviously the uh, fourth slot like 4 minus 1 is equal to 3 into 60 degree that is 180 degree you are getting the fourth slot here then what would be the next slot for A that should be another th three slot apart from the second A slot second A slot was 4 so third A slot should be at uh, 7 right so this is 5th, 6th, 7th, 7th A slot and then another 3 though 10th so A slot complete, A is placed, A phase winding is placed at 1, 4, 7, 10, 1, 4, 7, 10. Notice that all of them are 180 degree apart from each other and their total angular span is how much? 180 into 4, that is 720 degree and that should be the case. Fine. Now coming to B phase, if A is at 1, then where should B, B should be at such slot so that that slot if the slot index is n n minus 1 into that slot angle should give us 120 degree so b should be placed at third slot so once you place b at third slot then what you should do the next b should be 180 degree apart so if you place b at 3 then next one should be at what slot that should be 3 plus 3 that is at 6 slot so this is 4 5 6 yeah that is the second slot for B. Now you are going to the next slot. Next slot is what? Next slot is for uh, another B that should also be 180 degree apart from the first one. So if it is placed at 6, the next B should be placed at 7, 8, 9. So 9 minus 6, again 3, 3 into 60, that is 180 degree. We are getting the desired phase shift between two B phase slot. Then what should be the next B? Next B should be at 9 plus 3 because we need 3 slot to realize 180 degree phase shift. So it is at 12. Right. It is at 12. Now see here we are getting these uh, things uh, like one more thing here I would like to say. Now with once we done with A, B, C, we have to figure out what could be the position of C phase winding. Now here one thing you must make sure that as you have four pole machine I have considered let us not get confused let us just divide the machine in half. So we will have two pole for each half like I am uh, dividing this for half. So two pole for each half. Now let us if we divide then how many slots will be there in each half. There will be 12 by 2, 6 slots in each half. So how many uh, conductors should be allocated for each phase? There will be 6 by 3, 2 conductors should be allocated for each phase. And you can see that for if you take one half, then it is 1 and 4 for A, uh, 3 and 6 for B. Obviously remaining two conductors if you apply your common sense without zero knowledge, means without having any knowledge in electrical machine. You can figure out that remaining slot should be filled up with the conductors of C. However, how to understand this scientifically or means technically how to say it. Like uh, what is the difference between A and C? A and C should be 240 degree apart. So if we want 240 degree, then slot of A and slot of C should be uh, 
say in such a manner that angular electrical angle traversal should be 240 degree so if you place it at 1 then uh, it should be at fifth fifth slot should be occupied by c why because 5 minus 1 is equal to 4 into 60 degree you will get 240 degree so it is 1 then you forget about this slot you place the first slot here so why i am saying all this to you because this slot should be uh, means connected now after connecting this what you need to know you have to take uh, the another one like the first conductor of c should be placed at fifth now uh, i'm uh, just forget about the another half let us have these only six conductors now what should be the position of another c another c should be placed at then uh, you may get confused that if we add 5 plus 3 then it will give us how much 5 plus 3 will be 8 although we know that our second slot is vacant but we are getting that we have to place it at 8th slot but 8th slot is now available with us because we are having a 6th slot means for the time being we are having the 6th slot configuration so how to get that 8 there you should apply the mathematics like modulo 8 minus 6 whenever it means total span or sorry total number of slots become greater than your uh, number of slots available to you like here we are getting 8 but we are having only uh, 6 so uh, you have to figure out the next slot by doing 8 minus 6 that is uh, 2 so you have you should place the uh, six at second slot and also if you consider the total machine with four poles uh, three phase then what then you will be a bit more relaxed like first placing it at five then the next one of c should be placed at eight because five plus uh, six seven eight so eight minus five is equal to three three into sixty as 180 degree uh, for this kind of simple configuration all the phase winding should be 180 degree apart so this gives us 180 degree span and then again uh, what should be the next position it should be 8 plus 3 11 right so 11 you have placed one conductor now after that what should be the next position because uh, for 12 phase uh, sorry 12 slot you have four uh, conductors per phase so you have placed only three for C like one is at 5 another one is at 8 another one is at 11 so where should be the fourth one it should must be at 11 plus 3 that is 14 but 14 minus 12 when you will find that 14 minus 12 that will give you how much that will give you 2 again you have to uh, like whether you consider uh, 6 slot whether you consider 12 slot whether you consider 24 slot whenever you see that your number of slot whatever you are getting that is exceeding your uh, total available slot you have to subtract the number of available slot from the required number of slot like here at first we got 8 that was the required number of slot means uh, required slot and we uh, available slot was 6 so 8 minus 6 is equal to 2 here we are getting it's 14 14 minus 12 is equal to 2 so we can uh, fill our slots in this way now this is only mere placement of the conductors now how can you generate the lab or wave winding and also how you can connect them in star or delta. So obviously if you wanted them to be in uh, wave. So what is the way to connect wave? Wave is basically what? Wave is basically connecting conductors in series. So here I can you can see that I have connected A with one A in series. Then uh, the another A is connected in series. Then there is so these are the terminals like after connecting this 4A, 4 conductors in series, we are having 2 conductors uh, means uh, for A. Now remember for stator you will have 6 stator winding must be coming out of your machine housing. While you will connect like if you uh, recall the 3 phase transformer, we are having 3 uh, means if it is a um, like uh, 3 phase 3 wire connection 
or we are connecting three transformers always there are two terminals for each transformer and we are having total six terminals so here also out of these 12 slots 12 conductors you have to take uh, six out of them so how uh, a1 a2 you connect it in series and then it is you are getting that will give you a like uh, this is the terminal for a for web connection similarly for b you should connect them in series obviously if you connect all the a in series you have to connect all the b in series you have to connect all the c in series you cannot do it like you connect a in parallel b in series then c in parallel then that will cause an imbalance in voltage how like if uh, this much of say say one volt is induced across this a then uh, if you connect it with another one volt another one volt another one volt total four volt will you'll get between the terminals now instead of connecting b in, in series if you connect them in parallel how much you will get you will get it's uh, how to connect them in parallel i will discuss but you will get two volt so obviously that is not desirable and obviously web connection as we know that it is suitable for means uh, for low current application with high voltage with this if you connect the conductors keep connecting the conductors in series you can realize a higher voltage when you are considering it as a generator or even in case of a motor this winding can withstand a higher voltage now uh, coming to that another part like uh, uh, just i forgot what to say uh, yeah now similarly you connect b in series c in series now once you have taken this a1 b1 c1 and here you have a2 b2 c2 you can connect them like three phase transformer there is no other uh, means magic you can short them one end like if you short this one end and use these terminals as your means either output or input terminal then it will form a star or you can connect a1 with b2 c1 with uh, uh, a2 and b1 with c2 to form a delta it is your choice generally we form uh, the uh, stator winding of generator is formed in delta because delta is has its inherent stabilizing property of allowing the flow of third harmonic current sometimes also it is connected in star also and that depends on the nature of the generator we are considering we will discuss more on that however now let me discuss how you can connect them in parallel Series connection is quite easy, like a means a layman, you can just connect all the windings in series, your job is done. Right. But in case of parallel connection, if you think about uh, means connecting all this four slot in parallel, you are going to uh, means get a means very pathetic when you will find yourself in a very pathetic situation, stuck in a pathetic situation because your machine will be burnt out. Because if you sort all the power parallel means all the conductors in parallel, then basically you are connecting two uh, voltage source like two batteries you are connected with positive negative positive negative. So they will form a huge circulating current that is not desirable. What you should do for parallel connection like you again you have to connect this A1 say this is A1, this is A2, this is A3, this is A4, you have to connect A1, A2 in series, no way you should connect them in parallel because that will be a very, means uh, produce a very uh, pathetic condition, A1, A2 should be connected in series, similarly A3, A4 should be connected in series and then you connect A1 with A3, why A1 should be connected with A3? Because if you calculate the angular span, A1 is placed at 1, A3 is placed at what? at 7 so 7 minus 1 is equal to 6 and what is the inter slot electrical angle that is 60 degree so 6 into 60 degree that is 360 degree that means a1 and a7 both are having same phase so you can connect them in parallel with due regards of their polarity and also you can connect these two like uh, a4 and a9 in uh, no sorry a4 and a10 in parallel so the combination will be a1 shorted with the terminal of a3 and a4 shorted with the terminal of a10 and then say a1 a3 will form a1 shorted terminal a1 a3 will form a1 and this a4 a10 will form a2 and accordingly we will get the parallel combination of the stator winding 
now obviously uh, in this way you can uh, connect another way to connect them all in parallel is that the only way is to connect these two in parallel like you connect a1 with as you can see that a1 suppose this is our north pole this is our north pole this is our south pole so uh, for certain instance if this side this side is positive this side is negative and for this one uh, this side is what this side is positive this side is negative try to understand if this is north this is south for 180 degrees phase shift so what will happen to the polarity this is plus this is let us consider this is plus this is minus and this is plus this is minus so if you want very high current then what is the way out you have to short a4 means short dissimilar ends of uh, the conductors that are 180 degree apart like you have to short a1 with the dissimilar ends of a4 and then here the dissimilar ends with this and then again uh, same thing should be repeated for your a7 and a10 like dissimilar ends of a7 and a10 should be shorted and then the similar end of these two parallel combination should be shorted because they are in uh, polarity so in that case uh, if it was four uh, for when you connect all of them in series then it will be after connecting in this parallel form it will be one or in another way stating in another way for the first configuration your current was just one ampere suppose and now when you connect the dissimilar ends of this they have become 4 ampere why because you are connecting a1 8 uh, these dissimilar ends so actually they have to form a parallel path carrying current in the same direction and similarly these two and when you connect all these four in uh, means parallel then actually you are allowing a current path that is four times more uh, means allowing four times of flow current flow through this parallel combination so in this way you can generate different different uh, start delta winding as well as uh, your machine for your need this is only a single phase case uh, sorry not single phase uh, very simple single layer 12 slot 3 phase 4 pole machine later on we, in practical machine we will have a huge number of slots say 100 200 number of slots are there or maybe 500 depending on them what type of machine we need uh, later on we will see that in order to generate smooth waveform like you can understand that when you uh, place these two 60 degree apart uh, obviously the voltage that will be induced in this EMF uh, sorry in these conductors will not be very smooth in nature there will be a kind of step distribution but if you can make it very very close one conductor very close to another and uh, get a conductor group that will be dis, uh, discussed that as a distributed winding this is a concentrated winding you can see that you can measure this 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 the interslot angle but in case of distributed angle uh, winding the interslot angle is very very small not 60 degree no way it is very very small and we can get a more smooth waveform we will discuss more on them uh, as we proceed. So now let us consider some another case like in that example which I demonstrated there was uh, like 12 slot and one coil side like all the windings were single there. Now let us consider a case uh, like we are having 12 slots but like having uh, 12 slots but uh, it is a double layer So 12 slots double layer full pitch winding instead of drawing the uh, circular disc I would like to go for a surface development and will develop 
are parallelly placed 12 slots like this. Although my drawing may be uneven, but you should draw evenly. So this is slot 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Right. So this is the case. Now see, let us use different color. Say we use A with red color. Now this upper we can have all sides like uh, you can divide this in uh, two sides two layer this is this is the upper layer and we can also have bottom layer so the idea is that here we are 12 slots double layer full pitch winding for two pole three phase configuration so two pole three phase so you can uh, calculate the number of slots per pole clearly that will be 12 by 2 that is 6 so this side will uh, form one pole and this side will be on the uh, under uh, another pole now see uh, we are having double layer configuration so as it is double layer so let us have First, consider the placement of rate. Here, uh, one thing that since it is two poles, mechanical angle and electrical angle are same. So, first we have to place the winding for A phase. Say A phase winding, I am using red color to indicate A phase winding. Say this is first conductor of A. Now, uh, this 12 slots two layer can be uh, viewed as it is like um, uh, 12 slots two layer can be viewed as uh, a combination of 24 slots so from that if you can figure out how many slots should be allocated to individual phase if you want in even distribution that will be 24 by 3 is equal to 8 slots per phase so these 8 slots per phase how to place them so after placing the first one where you should place the adjacent side of the coil now uh, obviously if one end is on the upper layer the another end should be placed at the bottom layer to ensure more mechanical strength it will become uh, mechanically more rugged now uh, here 7 minus 1 is how much? 6. And what is your slot angle? That is 30 degree. So 6 into 30 that is 180 degree. So another end of coil A should be placed here. So you connect them. Now where should the next of coil A should be placed. Then you have to calculate the number of conduct uh, slots per pole per phase. So let me do it. What I am trying to say that uh, number of slots per pole per phase. So it is like, let us do it for single layer, like first uh, 12 
slots let us fill first 12 gap then we will fill next 12 gap so first let us 12 for 12 it is how much 12 3 into 2 that will be 2 that means uh, any two adjacent slot will be connected with the same phase and this has become a case of distributed winding where you can see that the means winding conductors are not concentrated like when you are talking about FS conductors one FS conductor and here also as I have mentioned two so you should place another FS conductor here but there is a phase difference of 120 degree sorry 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 not 120 degree 30 degree so this winding is distributed winding like if you cannot place all the turns or all the means where of if is at a single slot the first one which i showed you that was a case of concentrated winding that cut one now it is a case of distributed winding so again let us place it at the upper layer And obviously, the corresponding end should be placed here. Now, mind it, you should never ever see this is the front view. There are windings like uh, these are like channels, and you are having uh, copper conductors like this, means uh, there will be another end when I am drawing this actually uh, you will be uh, confused let me draw it more clearly in a different way so you can understand these two layer slots are like this This is the side view. This one is the front view. This is the side view. This is slot 1. Similarly, we will have here slot 2. Let us consider the left, left channel denote the upper layer. The right channel of one slot denote the lower layer. So similarly will have and similarly here you are having Sorry, 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 sorry. I said uh, left channel, upper layer. These are like the conductors, and now here it is the lower layer, is the right channel, is the lower layer. Now, when I am talking about connecting 1 and 7, then you must have to think that how should we connect them. Obviously, it is clear that one end of it is connected with 7. But how? How should you connect them? That is the main question here. So, what is the idea? like how 
you can consider them like this is uh, under north pole so this side should be uh, if you consider this side is my uh, plus this side should be minus and for south pole this side should be plus this side should be minus like at any time instant so what you should do here you should connect them in this way and also this one this one now obviously that here uh, for this we have to uh, connect them like uh, what we can do with this series combination like can you uh, can you connect them in parallel what is your thought on that see if you connect them in parallel then what would happen like you are connecting two uh, means two voltage sources with different value or you can uh, in terms of AC you can think about it like you are trying to connect two uh, sources with his difference so you should not do that rather what you should do you should connect this one like this one in series so what I'm trying to say like you should just wait. you should connect this one this seven end here and these two forms two open end of your A. So I hope it's somewhat clear to you. Now what about uh, phase B and like what about the first layer of B. So obviously if you consider let us con uh, use yellow for phase B or say blue for phase B. So oh sorry, sand, sand for phase B. So here phase B should be 120 degree apart. So let us fill uh, this one. How I am claiming that they are 120 degree apart very easy. See this is uh, 1. So if you take 5 then it is 4. 5 minus 1 4 and adjacent slot angle is 30 degrees so 4 into 30 120 degree and similarly from 2 to 6 it is uh, like this so if you draw them like here then you can find it is like So this will be again this is in upper channel so left uh, upper layer so it is left channel and now for here where the other two ends should be the other two ends should be at here because 5 plus 6 5 I need 6 because 6 into 30 that will give me 180 degree and uh, this uh, must be the case now 6 so 5 plus 6 11 and 12 are filled up so what about their corresponding slot So for intelligent students uh, or means those who are not intelligent, I think everyone is intelligent equally having equal intelligence but uh, oh sorry, sorry sorry those who will pay attention they can catch it very easily but if you do not pay attention then you find it extremely difficult.
So now like this if is you can connect thing. And also and then right so uh, one layer of B is also completed now what I would see uh, what I would see let us use a uh, yellow color for C not yellow actually I am also a color blind person so I not recognize what color actually it is anyway let me draw spot number 3 and spot number 4. So, uh, that upper layer of C should be 240 degree away from the upper layer of A. So, where we should find it, like it should be 8 slots away, means 9 and 10 should be the first layer for C. So 9 and 10, here it is 9, 10, so that is upper layer, so 9, left channel 9, then again left channel for the 10 fine and uh, what should be the other end of 9 it should be 9 plus 6 that is 15 but 15 slot is not available so 15 minus 12 is equal to 3 but in third slot since this one is that upper layer it should occupy the lower layer a bottom layer similarly uh, that for 10 it should occupy uh, fourth slot so uh, here 3 and 4 the bottom layer and bottom layer means the right channel they should occupy the right oh, sorry, 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 sorry. they should occupy the right channel so how to connect them like here it is the starting end then it should be like this and this is like here and like This end should be connected to this one. So here you are getting one of this C and Similarly, for B, you are having this. Now, this is for just the one set of upper layer, lower layer. How to fill up the another set? It's very simple. Whatever you fill the upper layer, now you just keep on filling the lower layer with same phase winding. Like fill one bottom layer, two bottom layer and then fill up bottom upper layer of seven and eight and then connect them. Similarly for B you fill up these two bottom layer add these two upper layer.
then for sorry C you fill three fourth upper layer and nine tenth bottom layer. So in a nutshell, if we draw it, it will look like this. Since it is very simple connection, it is very easy to represent. These uh, blocks represent two slots. This is A1, A4. Then here it is. Then uh, it is. B1 obviously in A1 you are having slot 1, 2. Right. So A1, B1, and then you are having here what you should have here. The next pair A2, then leave one more slot, then you are having here B2, then here you are having C1 then for this C1 you should have here C2 then uh, for A1 A4 you are having this uh, here A2 now here another slot will begin for A that is A3 and for that you will get it here A4 Similarly, here you will have B3, sorry, not B3, here you will have uh, B2, here you will have B3, then you are you will have B4, and here you will have C4, here you will have C3. So one obvious thing that may come in your mind that why we are uh, doing it means even while index, uh, means indexing them why it is so so we need it it's very easy to understand like if you group them this is the first this is the second now if you instead of considering uh, 12 slot if you consider them like uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and in the next layer it is uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Total 24, actually speaking you have to place 24 conductors. Now see what is the funda like 1 and 7 they are exactly apart by how much they are apart 1 and 7 they are actually uh, 7 minus 1 is equal to 6 and 6 into 30 gives you 180 degree now when you are uh, here you are 13 that is 13 minus 1 is equal to 12. So 12 into 30 that is 360 degree. Okay. But what about this side? Like when you will fill up, basically you, as you are taking for the lower side, it should start from here. Why it should start from here? Like just this uh, below 7, it is 19. Why it should start from here? like uh, means already you have filled up 1920 in that way in uh, case and then it should start here and then it goes to this so basically you can f figure out that why we are grouping them in such a way and then we can interconnect them depending on our voltage and current requirement like uh, this set this A1 we can uh, like A1 is what is A1 try to understand this whole group forms A1 
right this forms this set of conductors forms a2 this set of conductors form a3 this set of conductors form a4 so what we can have we can have it like just like a uh, zigzag case what you see transformer with uh, mid tap point like we have A1 and A2 they form one set and you connect it like A4 and A3. Why not A3, A4? Think about it. What would happen? Like why A1, A2? Because what is the polarity? See if it is plus, it is minus. And again you should connect A4 is plus. See A, A4 is adjacent to A1. So that is why it is A4, A3. We are looking for a high voltage winding that is we should go for star. So let us connect all of them in series. Similarly here it is like B3, B4 and uh, B2, B1. Similarly here it is C3, C4. C2, C1. Well, now this is for high voltage star. We can have low voltage star as well. How? B3, B4, and similarly, C1, C2. C4, C3. So this is the low voltage star. Similarly, we can have delta also, like high voltage delta. How to connect high voltage delta? It is very easy. We can show you. Just let me check whether all these are recording or not. Otherwise, this is totally worst. And it's recording. So what? Uh, how to do that? Like. High voltage delta I am showing you. Oh, well, let me draw it, otherwise, it's taking huge time let us consider this is a phase this phase a this phase b this c so how you should do it like a b c this is one form of winding connection another one you can have like a c b Got it. So we can have this kind of HV delta as well as for this we can have LV delta. Anything is possible. Here in AC that is the main thing that it's very flexible in nature. Now uh, 
what we can do is that we will study quadrant winding. So here as the number of slots is very small, only 12 slots are there, we cannot show you much of that. Okay, let me, let me uh, try to, okay, no, it's 12 slots also will have it. So if, I think you will be able to understand. Let me draw the slots clearly. These are the front view of the slots after surface development. So here it is like at least uh, in this way we are having identical slots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. So we are having 12 slots together, fine. Now here what is required that uh, we want to realize a short pitch point. What is short pitch like for normal coil it is uh, uh, again we are considering 12 slot, 2 layer, 3 phase. Both. So, what is uh, slot angle? This is electrically 30 degree, right? Now, what we are uh, we want sometimes uh, later on I will discuss more on this the purpose of coding a coil. What is coding? Like instead of allowing the coil for full pitch, that is uh, uh, having a span of electrically 180 degree, what we can do sometimes we cord it like. We reduce the coil span by some angle and that become uh, something it's known as cording of the coil. So as here one adjacent slots are 30 degree. So what was the case like if we uh, let us number it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So if we want coding, then what is normal span that is 7 minus 1 is equal to 6 into 30 degree that gives you like 180 degree that is the normal span. But if we want that instead of having a coil span 180 degree, let my coil have a span of 150 degree. So when we will have one end of our coil placed at upper layer of uh, one we can realize a coil that is short pitched or corded by an angle of 30 degree by placing it other end not at 7 which uh, results in full pitch distribution placing it at 6. So similarly for the other coil of means uh, C for 12 slot 2 layer 3 phase uh, the let me write it very clearly that number of slot um, 
purple per face it is still two so even if you code it you cannot change it so how to realize that let us see it's going to be very interesting however i cannot draw uh, in the previous one i think you have got some idea now i it is i am just giving you the front view and you will be a mature enough to relate so for two again i am maintaining the same coil pitch of 150 degree so how to connect them like one will be connected with six and then uh, the six will be connected with two and two with seven and this gives us the two terminal right so this hole is like a1 a2 well now uh, instead of having 180 degree we are having 150 degree what is the, it's is, means why should we call it that uh, we will discuss later but uh, you got it like oh, sorry how to how to place the winding that is now somewhat clear to you for corded coil so if i ask you to cord it by an angle of 60 degree where you should place okay for 30 degree let us first fill up all the slots at least one layer of slots uh, then we will uh, do experiment with the other case now do remember corded coil has nothing to uh, do or mane they has no intention to change your inter uh, face angular span because if you change that then it will create a huge imbalance means it will become totally incompatible means uh, the total things will not become compatible with other supply because your standard supply your balanced operation you are having 120 degree phase difference even if we will see that even if after coding uh, we will have that balance condition but if we uh, means change the angular difference between two phases like 2a and b here what we are doing instead of giving them allowing them 180 degree phase we are allowing 150 degree but we no way empowered to do any change between the interface angle so here it should be like uh like previous case it is 5 and 6 will be occupied by the upper layer of your b now what about the lower layer of b see it is again we need 150 degree instead of 180 so instead of uh, means giving it 6 uh, another means instead of traversing 6 slots now we will traverse only 5 slots so 5 plus 5 so we will place it in 10 and in 11 previously if you uh, recall it was 11 12 let us uh, just go back yes it was 11 12 5 6 11 12 now that was full pitch like two uh, adjacent side of the coils we are having 180 degree phase shift now here we are having 150 degree corded by now uh, what about c same logic uh, that interface angle should remain same so previously if c occupied your upper layer of 9 and 10 now also c should occupy the upper layer of 9 and 10 fine no issue so what about the other two layer uh, in the previous case it was uh, the second or bottom layer of c was uh, we found it like 9 plus 6 that will give us or that was giving us 15 and 15 minus 12 is equal to 3 however here we need not 6 slots difference rather 5 slots difference is sufficient 
So 9 plus 5 minus 12 that is 2. So the this lower one should be placed at 2. Do not worry, there is a means insulation layer exists between uh, two adjacent layers, so there will be no such means short circuit or anything will happen to your winding. Now for 10, it will be 10 plus 5, 15, that is 3. So this is one set of layer. Now uh, here, uh, what about the other set? see like uh, for the other set uh, this is our A group so the other set will start from exactly 180 degree apart so the other set uh, upper layer coil will occupy uh, 7 and 8 why because here we need 180 degree phase difference. Like in uh, terms of square span, when you are connecting one with bottom layer of six, upper layer of one with bottom layer of six, and upper layer of two with bottom layer of seven, you are actually realizing a coil that is having two coil sides. 150 degree electrical apart right uh, so you are generating this like two coils means 150 degree apart so now you can connect this in series and then you are getting something right like if previously it was full uh, voltage like you can uh, visualize it like uh, if one set is uh, having or uh, giving you a small emf e another set for 180 degree it was e plus sorry e minus e cos of 180 degree so it was giving you 2e and now instead of cos 180 degree you are having cos 150 degree that is you are getting e plus um, what is the value of this it would be like uh, plus sin 60 degree e that is so the previous if uh, previously you were getting 2e between them now you will get 1 plus root 3 by 2 between them right now um, what is the point here the point is very simple uh, that uh, when we are looking for a total different coil uh, we are going to form the phase group for total uh, different coil now see what uh, does that means how it can cause a trouble to us if we do not allow 180 degree phase difference just allow me a minute let me show you like here if you see that yeah uh, you consider this one this a1 a2 there is having instead of 2e now they are having say 1 plus root 3 by 2e but what about this a4 a3 if you do not uh, means allow 180 degree uh, means phase shift there then what would happen when you will try to connect them in parallel or in series they will start giving you some undesirable phase shift will exist between them and that will cause flow of circulating current like here you can see that 
A3, since A3 is exactly, if you see this uh, diagram, it's clear. A3 is exactly 180 degree apart from A1 and A4 is exactly 360 degree apart from A1. So this makes sense, like you can connect them in parallel, but uh, instead of uh, considering this, if we uh, make it three, uh, instead of making it uh, like 150 degree, if we, although it is occupied by B, but even if there was, uh, means there is no conductor of B is present, we should not occupy this because this is completely different coil set. This is another set of A. This is, uh, let me write, this is A1, this is A2. Although actually uh, they are not like A1, A2, but uh, for the sake of simplicity, we can uh, represent them in this way. Now here it is like we are having A3. Yeah, they are A2. Okay, fine. They, they are A2, A3. Now what about the other end? So 7, uh, where should I place it? We are having, uh, we need 150 degree coil span electrically. So 7 plus 5 that is 12, well, so let us occupy the bottom layer of 12. Then what about 8 plus 5 that is 13, 13 minus 12, 1. So we have to occupy the bottom layer of slot 1. So A3, these two will form A4. Well, now the uh, like how how to uh, see that uh, how we can place um, b same uh, like the previous case we can place b like uh, if these are the uh, then it should be the upper layer should be at 11 12 make no mistake that if you do not allow 180 degree span between these uh, two groups, you will not be able to connect them in a proper manner. So you have to allow two groups. So 5 plus 6, 11, then uh, 6 plus 6, 12. Well, for the next uh, end, uh, sorry, the other end of this group that is placed at upper layer, it is 11 plus instead of 6, now we will count. Uh, consider 11 plus 5. So what about 11 plus 5? 11 plus 5 is 16. That means 16 minus 12. It should occupy this one. And similarly 12 plus 5 17. 17 minus 12 that is 5. Again it will occupy this. So this is our B3. This is our B4. This one is B1. Now, what about C? Uh, if the, they are placed here, like C1, then this is our C2. Then obviously that C3 should be 180 degree from the C1, like if it is 9, so the other uh, C3 should be 9 plus 6, that is exactly here. And what about um, this, uh, like C2, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, this will be here, so this forms C3. Now if this forms C3, then for C3 again, well, we have to find it and it's very easy like 3 plus 5 so we have to occupy 8 and for 4 plus 5 we have to occupy 9 so that gives us c4 now it's somewhat means it should become a bit clearer to you because gradually you proceed uh, you will get more about it now um, uh, those who are still in confusion, let me uh, do it by uh, considering a cording of 180 degree. Sorry, it's not cording of 180 degree, cording of 60 degree.
So I think we have Now, here, upper layer, again, uh, that slot per pole per phase still remain 2. We are considering the same thing, only change between the previous example and this example. Now, we are considering coordinate by uh, 60 degree. So, 60 degree means uh, coil span will be 120 degree. So, how to consider that or how to do it like? So, one, now, instead of, means adjacent slot angle is 30 degree. So, if we want a 120 degree coil span, then the next end should be placed at here, at 5. For one, it is 5 and for two, it is 6. Well, now as I have mentioned that we cannot change the phase angle between two phases so a uh, the b upper layer one group of b should be placed that is exactly 120 degree one uh, 5 minus 1 4 is equal to 120 degree this is 120 degree now what should be the other end of that this group of b like 5 plus 4 that is 9 and 6 plus 4 that is 10 well now what about C like I have mentioned that C should also be placed at uh, from just uh, 120 degree apart from this like if it is start at 5 then C should occupy the upper layer of C should occupy this however for lower layer it should be 9 plus 4 that is 13 13 is equal to 12 minus 1 sorry 13 minus 12 is equal to 1 and similarly 10 plus 4 14 14 means 14. now uh, similarly one more thing you can see that uh, those who are not getting why I am doing this multicolored circus please try to understand this Later on you will uh, find this circus more meaningful. Okay. So now uh, let us place the upper layer of another coil group for A. So let me write this one is A1, A2 and then what about A3? A3 should always be 180 degree apart, so it will uh, occupy this 7 and 8. It is exactly 180 degree apart. So this gives A3. Now what about the? It should be 7 plus 4 and 8 plus 4, so they will occupy here. Now uh, what about the? other coil loop of B, B is like uh, it should be 5 plus 6 and 6 plus 6 so B should, the upper layer of B should occupy here. But what about uh, the other end, it should be 11 plus 4 that is 15, 15 minus 12 it should occupy 3 and then it is like uh, 12 plus uh, 4 that is 16, 16 minus 12 again 4. So if this is B1, 
these two form B2, these two form B3, this is our B4. Now, um, remaining should be filled with C, but we can uh, show you like uh, if you place it here, then the other end should be 9 plus 6 that it should occupy here. It should occupy this slot 9 plus 6 15 15 minus 12 is equal to 3 and 10 plus 6 16 16 minus 12 is equal to 4 so it should occupy this slot and for this again 3 plus 4 it should occupy this 7 and 4 plus 4 it should occupy this 8 so you can understand that if you place it in a scientific in a technical manner there will be no chaos in coil placement it is perfectly easy perfectly balanced and you will always get this and this is also an interesting case where you can see that here uh, we are having totally the upper layer is belongs to some one phase and the lower layer belongs to a different phase it is also a very interesting case now what is its physical interpretation we will discuss later but we are at present discussing different different type of uh, winding diagram we are trying to understand this now here one thing is uh, you should understand that here we are doing it's like having a coil span of means we call this as this total thing as like A narrow spread winding. Why narrow spread? Because you will see that in each group it is like all if you consider A1, A2, A3, A4, all this, all of them have a spread of Sixty degree. So this is known as uh, our phase spread. So this is the amount of angle uh, spread or means spent by the like all the adjacent coils together, right? Now uh, with this phase spread what uh, more we can get like what more we can write here uh, is we can have 120 degree coil split sounds funny but it's true what is the logic of 120 degree or that is called white spread coil so hopefully i will be able to make you more um, is confused with that widespread coil distribution so let us have that You people think that is having enough fun in confusing us, but at the end of it is the other way around that I am very is not at all enjoying this process of confusing anyone. But unfortunately people are not ready to go for it. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And it is no way my intention to travel with people, but to make sure you become industry ready. Okay. 
obviously I have my own limitation anyway. Forget about that. What is my limitation? Whatever you have for this semester, that is here. So that slot angle is again like adjacent uh, means one slot angle is how much slot angle is um, how much it is two ball machine so 360 by 12 that is 30 degree now uh, what we claim here that instead of means having two different end of a b c like uh, in the previous case you can have uh, c for narrow spread coil what you had uh, yeah for narrow spread coil what you had all these are like all these conducted groups occupied 60 degree and this total one this three occupied how much this three occupied 180 degree but instead of means and this total six they are occupying 360 degree in any layer but what is the idea of widespread that let us all the phase uh, means uh, adjacent phase coils have a face spread or they occupy together 120 degree so we will place three 120 degree together to realize that 360 degree right so how we can do that uh, let us try to understand how can we do that now So, if we want phase spread of uh, 120 degree, let us uh, allow phase A first to occupy 120 degree. Similarly, phase B will occupy the next tree. However, here there is a certain uh, this surprises there for you. Like unlike the previous case, here uh, you will see that after A, this uh, 120 degree if you consider, then uh, from this uh, if you draw a center line of this first four slot this is here and if you draw a center line for this next four slots this is here and what is the angular spread that is 120 degree so you should not place C here rather you should place the winding of B and B will again occupy that four right well now what about that your uh, your like your C C should again occupy this like So now here uh, what about the other side that should be 180 degree apart so it is like uh, this is the center line so 
uh, it if it is 1 then it should start at 7 then 8 like the upper layer it should also occupy the four slots of the bottom layer so 7 8 9 10 and then it would be like for B it is eleven twelve mm. it is very simple five plus six eleven six plus six twelve seven plus six thirteen that is one eight plus six 14 that is 2. Now the remaining slot would be occupied by C but you can also verify that like 9 plus 4 that is uh, how much uh, sorry 9 plus 6 that is 15 that is uh, 15 minus 12 3 then 10 plus 6 16 that is 4 then again 11 plus 6 17 that is 5 and 12 plus 6 18 that is 6 so you can uh, see that how the widespread connections are however uh, it may create a confusion among you that how to connect them so let me show you how they are connected here we have considered this is uh, minded like previous two cases were so narrow spread for narrow spread it was coded but this one is full spread uh, full spread one so let me show you how to connect them uh, like let me draw first the upper layer coil for slot 1 slot 2 slot 3 slot 4 so now see that 1 2 3 4 so how can we connect them? Think about it. Mm, let us take this is uh, one, two, three, four, and here it is. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So now, for 1 it is 7, 8, 9, 10. As I mentioned that this is a full pitch distribution. So 1 with connected with 7. 2 connected with 8, 3 connected with 9, 4 connected with 10. So you can see that all the coils are having coil span that is exactly equal to uh, 180 degree like 1 7, the two side of the coil 180 degree. 2 8 180 degree, 3 9 180 degree, 4 10 180 degree. So you can see it now what is interesting that how you are going to connect them. Like one way is that you can connect the 7 with 2 then 8 with 3 and then the 9 with 4 so basically you have connected all of them in series so you will get uh, or you should get 4 times of individual coil voltages right uh, now so here it is the two end of coil A. 
or you can connect them in parallel like how to connect them in uh, like here yeah, it is difficult for you to connect them in parallel because there is a circulating current to the flow so basically high voltage uh, sorry this widespread winding it's mainly suitable for high voltage coil connection now see the few advantages of 120 degrees are there that we will discuss more later on now let us uh, draw that what about uh, this uh, b so b will be like one layer that is upper layer that is at five six like here it is five six seven eight and the lower layer are where eleven twelve one I'm following the same convention like if it is left channel then it is the upper layer if it is right it is the lower layer now you can connect them similarly like uh, this 5 with 11 6 with 12 uh, the 7 one should be connected with this one and 12 one with this like 8 two should be connected with this 2 fine now what about C phase so you can similarly you can connect them in series to form uh, like keep this is one end of your B phase then obviously you can connect them like then this So you are having these are the two ends say B B dash it was like A A dash and now we have to draw uh, C so where C are in upper layer C are in upper layer for 9, 10, 11, 12. So it's 9, 10, 11, 12. As all these are upper layer, I have drawn it left to the previous one and then in which it is lower that is in 3 in 4 in 5 and in 6 so how to connect them like this 9 we should connect it with 3 then this 10 10 should be connected to 4 because 10 plus is 16 16 minus 12 it is 4 then 11 11 should connect to do it 11 plus 6 that is 17 17 minus 12 5 and then obviously 12 should connect with 
this one. See, similarly, you can form it. So it is clear that how to realize the widespread pointing. Uh, it is widespread full layer. We can also have widespread coded layer, like uh, just by shifting it one uh, as slot angle. Like it's very easy to show. It is like widespread. Like here. So here, uh, our objective is to realize corded winding for uh, 120 degree face spread. So this is the four, one, two, three. Similarly, if we want 30 degree cording, then instead of placing the other end at 7, we should place it 6, 6 and accordingly 7, 8, 9. Fine. Now what I would be, B should be here at 5, 6. Seven, eight, then it should be like five plus five, ten, eleven, twelve, and then here at one. Now for uh, C it is or C it is nine, ten, eleven, twelve. However, what about the other end of C? That would be nine plus five, that is fourteen, fourteen minus twelve, that is at two, then ten plus five, fifteen, that is at three. Then here at 11 plus uh, 5, 16, that is at 4, 12 plus 5, that is at 5. So this is uh, 120 degree with uh, cording of 30 degree. Well, we'll meet in the next video, we'll see that why all these are required.